Welcome everybody to the Johnson Matthey Platinum Group Metals Conference, Critical to the Future of Sustainable Technology. So what is the role of PGMs in the future technologies or those technologies that are going to allow us to have a beautiful, sustainable and successful future as human beings on our wonderful planet? My name is Dr. Sarah Gordon. Now, before we get started, or basically the bit that you have all been waiting for, because of course this is a conference and Emma, I'm going to invite you to maybe say some words against this particular slide. Uh, because of course this is a Johnson Matthey conference, there is a little bit of a legal disclaimer we need to flash up at the beginning in front of you. We will put this into chat as well if any of you want to read this in detail. Uh, so our third presentation of this morning comes to us from um, the the, the seriously amazing person who is Leanne Kemp. She is quite frankly hilarious. She's brilliant. She is one of those brave souls who is using ledger-based technology to say, okay, well, let's try and keep track of what is going on with regards to all sorts of different minerals and metals. Um, Leanne is the founder and CEO of Everledger, which started off in the world of gemstones. But of course, you can utilize this technology for many other materials, such as, of course, the PGMs. Excited. So I'm thrilled to share with you the incredible journey and my experiences in traceability. I started Everledger in the heart of 2014, and we began our journey by leveraging blockchain technology to revolutionize traceability efforts in diamonds, gemstones, and jewelry. With paralleled investment, we also made in critical minerals, particularly focusing on the rise and the demand of the digital product passport for electric vehicle batteries. So when it comes to traceability efforts in critical minerals and metals, understanding the fundamental concepts of blockchain technology is key. I guess it's like laying the foundation for a sturdy house. And once we grasp these concepts, we can truly appreciate how blockchain can enhance traceability and transparency in our industry, the platinum group of metals. So firstly, to set the scene, you know, policy is a dominating driving force for traceability efforts. It's a macro trend, whether it be in diamonds, gemstones, textiles, electronic waste, it's here to say. You know, we certainly have seen the rise of OFAC sanctions around the concern of Russian diamonds and the notable example of the EU battery directive that aims to ensure sustainable production and disposable of batteries. And we all know that batteries often contain, you know, critical minerals um, and certainly other automotive parts, PGMs. Well, the EU battery directive sets down requirements for traceability of these min minerals and metals um, promoting responsible sourcing, ethical practices, and environmental stewardship. And guess what? You know, blockchain fits like a glove with the goals of the EU battery directive and traceability efforts specifically in that critical mineral sector. So with transparency, immutability, and the decentralised nature, blockchain allows stakeholders to establish a rock-solid system for tracking the origin, movement, responsible sourcing of PGMs. I mean, imagine having a secure, auditable record of each transaction, ensuring compliance with regulation and enhancing transparency throughout the supply chain. I guess it's like having a trustworthy ledger that everyone can rely upon. Um, by implementing blockchain-based traceability solutions, the PGM industry can show its commitment to responsible sourcing, environmental sustainability, and meeting the requirements set forth by follow policy forces. I mean, just like I gave that example around the EU battery directive. But it's not just about ticking those compliance boxes. It's also building a better reputation as a responsible and ethical supplier of critical minerals and PGMs. And as you know, what they say, a good reputation goes a long way. So of course, with any technology, there's always different perspectives to consider. Some may argue that blockchain implementation comes with its own challenges. It certainly does. You know, garbage in, garbage out, scalability, interoperability, and then of course, data privacy. I mean, it's important to address these concerns and find practical solutions that work for everyone. By engaging in open discussions and forums like this today and embracing diverse viewpoints, we can find a balanced approach to implementing blockchain across the PGM industry. So I'm going to run through the fundamentals and the concepts of blockchain because it's crucial to enhancing traceability efforts. Um, we also see policy forces such as the EU Battery Directive that can help 
to establish those transparent supply chain. And if we do embrace blockchain, we are able to meet those regulatory requirements, address financial um, constraints, uh, as well as address those environmental concerns and build trust with stakeholders. So blockchain, let me just start. It is not Bitcoin. Certainly when it comes to supply chain platforms, the separation of the currency from the ledger is a key fundamental to understand. And blockchain technology revolutionizes the way we approach traceability, transparency, and responsible sourcing in PGM. Now it's decentralized by nature, therefore it's not centrally controlled or housed. It's immutable, it cannot be changed. And the consensus mechanisms that enable that data to transact lay the foundations for a secure and transparent platform. And with blockchain, we can trace the origins of PGMs, validate responsible sourcing and optimize processes through the supply chain. So here we go. It's decentralized by nature, immutable and has consensus mechanisms. Let's unravel the wonders of that. Like, tr unlike traditional uh, centralized systems, blockchain is decentralized and it's distributed. So it operates on a peer-to-peer -peer network. And this means no single entity or no single authority has control over the data or the decision-making process. And transactions are validated and verified through consensus amongst the network participants. And that fosters transparency, trust, and eliminating risk with a large single point of failure. Look, another incredible feature of blockchain is its immutability in that once a transaction is recorded on the blockchain, it becomes virtually impossible to alter or tamper that data. And this immutability ensures the integrity and trustworthiness of information is stored on the chain, making it an ideal solution for establishing transparent and auditable uh, records. So now we've got traceability and provenance through blockchain for responsible sourcing, we can dive into this transformation power that it brings in traceability. Um, blockchain enables us to track the origin and movement of PGMs throughout the supply chain. And each of those transactions recorded on chain acts as a breadcrumb, allowing us to trace the journey of PGMs or diamonds or critical minerals from extraction to refining to beyond. Now, Blockchain alone doesn't provide for provenance. In other words, it has to act with a symphony of technologies. Um, and certainly in the experiences we have, whether it's isotopes or additional information like QR codes and RFID, or even in the world that we work with in diamonds, it's physical fingerprinting of that object that enables us to connect the physical and the digital together. But with blockchain, we can establish that transparent and auditable record of transaction, installing confidence in the provenance of PGMs. I guess it's like having a digital passport for each precious metal, showcasing its journey and validating its authenticity. So when we start considering this enhanced transparency across the PGM supply chain, I mean, it's a vital ingredient for industry that blockchain can take it to new heights. By leveraging blockchain technology, we can create a secure and transactional platform. We're able to imagine um, having a window into the movement of PGMs throughout the supply chain, identifying bottlenecks, optimizing processes, and enhancing overall efficiency. You know, the transparency provided by this technology fosters trust amongst stakeholders and provides an audible tamper-proof record of transactions. And as I said, it's not limited to PGM as an industry, it's being used widely as a powerful tool for complying with regulatory requirements. Um, so let's move on to policy drivers because it's an exciting time for industry as we witness the convergence of standards and policies that aim to enhance transparency and even responsible sourcing. You know, the international community is rallying behind the need to establish ethical supply chains and ensure traceability. Um, not just limited to critical minerals and also PGMs, but as I said, even across into textiles and food. One notable policy driver in Europe is the EU Battery Directive. And this directive sets out the requirements for responsible sourcing and traceability, particularly around batteries, but not limited to solar panels, car parts, automotives, um, electronic waste. It's a set, it is a step forward in ensuring that any metals and materials used in batteries are obtained through that ethical and sustainable practice. But it's not just Europe. We're also seeing broader global initiatives such as the OECD, the due diligence guidelines, 
which provides guidelines for responsible mineral supply chains. Um, and we also have voluntary international standards and initiatives for the PCF, the Primary Carbon Footprint Reporting, which again links to that EU battery directive mandate, where it helps to enable the calculation and the reporting of the carbon footprint of battery supply chain. Now, here comes the interesting part, the rise of digital product passports, you know, they're powered by technologies like blockchain and are gaining momentum in industry. Now, these passports act as a digital certificate that enhances the traceability and the data visibility across verifiable information, not just limited to origin and sustainability. It's like having a trustworthy virtual ID card for each precious metal. And of course, not everyone might be on board with these developments. I mean, some may rise these contrarian views, questioning the feasibility or effectiveness of standards and policies. But it's essential to consider that different perspectives engage in a constructive discussion to find the balanced approach that works for everyone. Undeniably, increasing the demand for transparency is not just from consumers. Certainly, it's a large drawcard when we think about the diamond supply chain, but also large scale interest is mounting when it comes to investors and regulatory bodies. They're adding further pressure to establishing industry wide standards and policy frameworks. And it's this collective effort to meet the evolving expectations of stakeholders and ensure that PGM industry operates responsibly and sustainably. So the policy drivers around EU has kicked off when it began in 2020. And of course, we're well into the regulation as it enters into force in August 2023 this year, with a 42 month window to enable the battery passport adoption. So there are a number of initiatives well underway. The digital product passports, these DPPs, are emerging as a powerful tool to advance the European twin transition. And it's a policy framework aimed at simultaneously addressing the green transition and digital transformation this duality of change. You know, the DPPs involve the creating of a digital record of a product's environmental and social impact through its life cycle, promoting more sustainable, circular and digital economy. And the battery passport is pioneering the DPP, particularly in Europe, focusing on the battery sector itself and those associated metals and minerals in that supply chain. Look, the concept is expanding into other product categories like textiles and construction, consumer electronics, plastics, chemicals, automotive. Um, but by implementing digital product passports, companies can enhance the transparency, track their product life cycle impact and promote responsible practices. Now, in other regions, we are also seeing similar initiatives. The China Ministry of Industry and Information Technology has established a comprehensive traceability platform for the traction of battery production, sales, utilisation, recycling and more. And this initiative ensures information collection and traceability management aligns with the goals of that sustainable battery utilisation and recycling. Um, the United States, well spoken about Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA, provides a significant tax credit for electric vehicles assembled in North America and battery passports play a critical role in helping automakers track and trace their battery supply chain, including critical minerals and component parts, ensuring compliance and the IRA's requirements and supporting sustainable practices in the EV industry. So look, these global initiatives and the adoption of DPPs demonstrate a growing recognition of the importance of transparency, traceability, sustainable practices across an industry. And by leveraging them, companies can align with policy objectives, meet regulatory requirements, foster trust, and amongst consumers who prioritise sustainability in their purchasing decisions. So let's just take a look deeper. Like, what does this mean? The battery regulation is introduced by the EU. It's significant reform that encompasses the life cycle of batteries. It introduces that concept into the DPP, that digital product passport. And the groundbreaking regulation covers a number of various aspects and requirements, including life cycle stages, regulatory categories, regulation categories, substance restrictions, recycle content, due diligence, green public procurement, state of health, expected lifetime, carbon footprint, goes on and on and on. And the battery regulation establishes specific criteria 
and exemplary requirements for different aspects of that supply chain, um, particularly around battery production of use and end of life management. Um, it includes restrictions on substances like mercury, cadmium, lead with delegated acts, potentially extending to the list. And the regulation also sets out minimum levels of recovered cobalt, lead, lithium, lithium and nickel. Now in the PGM industry, this is a paralleled example of what potentially could be coming towards industry. It is a substantive battery regulation mandate and it enforces the implementation of a due diligence policy. And in that due diligence policy, it includes traceability and chain of custody systems. Now, it also calls for the establishment of the criteria for sustainable procurement procedures, promoting that environmentally friendly choice. Now, it doesn't stop there. It goes even harder into labelling requirements that are introduced, including the determination of a list of general information on battery labels itself. And funnily enough, it does stipulate the requirement of a QR code for easy access to that information, this physical to digital link. Safety parameters are emphasised, particularly for stationary energy storage systems, and the regulation promotes consumer-friendly practices. Now, for the first time, we've seen carbon footprint reporting that is required, with manufacturers obliged to provide that carbon footprint information for each battery module per manufacturing plan. Um, and so, as we can see, it's a significant innovation that's been introduced by the regulation itself. And the concept of a digital product passport and an electronic record that contains this key static and dynamic data about a battery or a piece of mineral within the supply chain um, is quite complicated. So, overall, the regulation represents a comprehensive, ridiculously ambitious framework that aims to promote that's sustainable battery production. Um, but let's see what it looks like because we now have effectiveness across seven content clusters. Um, and those content clusters call out for everything from the end finished product beyond end of life, right the way back to the core supply chain due diligence as it relates to core materials from the mine. So what is it? digital product passport look like? I guess many people are asking. Well, here's an example of a screen. It's typically made up of four key sectorial data points. Um, and as we start to look at this data, it makes it very clear that the battery tab is a vital resource in offering comprehensive information about that manufacturing composition and the performance. It helps users make an informed decision regarding the battery usage, recycling, disposal, um, and you're also able to see the specifics around the cell type, the chemistry, the total energy, the rated capacity, the expected lifetime. Now, it's a complicated supply chain to enable it to be able to capture this data and make simple. So therefore, the battery passport also incorporates the material tab. Uh, next screen. Now, in the material tab, it highlights the importance of each of the supply chain participants right the way back to its source. In this bill of material of a battery, it enables us to reverse engineer the effectiveness of each of those primary traced materials. It shows us where the mine of origin or the country of origin comes to bear and the percentage of those materials through that supply chain that ultimately has an ambition to become a circular effect of um, those materials so that we can reuse and repurpose. On the third tab is where we move to ESG credentials. And those ESG credentials are critical as we start to collect data, specifically related to greenhouse gas emissions, as I mentioned before, the human rights and child labour indexing and scoring. And we're starting to understand how we can enable a quality seal of that data, which is where the last tab in the battery passport really begins to shine, in my opinion. And this ESG, um, sorry, the last tab, yeah. The data value chain. This is the digital product passport that enables us to be able to offer insights into the identity, the material flow and that ESG data. 
And this tab um, highlights the digital journey through that supply chain, enabling us to capture each of those basic data verification points. Um, it will show whether that data has been captured in a partial view, in a known or in a not traced environment, or purely if it's been estimated and or it's been reported or skipped. Um, and as we start to bring multiple technologies together, this interoperability or integration, we are then able to score the veracity of the data, whether there's been an interoperable provider of data. In this instance on screen, there was only one. And if there was to be a traceable interoperable series of network providers, then who they are and arguably how they're integrating. So the circular economy and transitioning towards it is a keystone and critical position of all industry sectors. When we begin to think about the concept of a circular economy, it revolves around minimizing waste and maximizing those resource efficiencies. And blockchain does play a critical role in achieving this transition by providing that traceability element. A lot of people consider provenance as being something that only tracks it from the source of its origin. But I always think about provenance of where is it going to after it leaves me, not just where does it come from. And so as we begin to unpin, underpin that technology across the supply chain, it's very clear that we're able to not only track the origin, extraction, refining, and then the eventual end of life process, we can also use this information to optimize that reclamation, the recycling and the reuse efforts that are clearly offered and recovered by PGMs and critical minerals. In all of this, reducing that environmental footprint is key. Like any other industry, we face environmental challenges. Uh, it's not that blockchain will solve this problem. Their job or its job as a blockchain is to connect under a network effect that enables us to have that pull through of trusted data across multiple participants. And the more complicated the supply chain, the more valuable distributed ledger technologies is. Now, blockchain itself in being able to implement um, and the adoption of the technology, it holds great promise. But, you know, successful implementation and adoption requires really careful consideration of varying challenges and factors. Once someone asked me a question, why is it that the diamond industry was able to embrace the technology so prolifically? Um, and I think it came down to a very simple position and that was we had the alignment of both value creation and values within a supply chain. It enabled those participants to align well, to be able to share data and consider that in a private permissioned environment um, where there was definitely transparency, but there was also um, not necessarily secrecy, but we're able to have privacy. Now the challenges around considering blockchain technology, some of these include scalability. We deal with large volumes of data and transactions and ensuring the scalability of blockchain networks becomes crucial. Now, unlike in 2014, we've had significant maturity on how we can companion engineering of on-chain and off-chain information and solutions are definitely designed to maturity now where they can handle the growing demands of industry. Now, interoperability, that integration point between multiple providers is also a key essential ingredient to ensuring um, that blockchain enables the next level approach to data sharing. But interoperability standards and interoperability protocols need to be established for effective data exchange and collaboration. And at the very core of this is data privacy. So how can we enable the data sensitivities and yet still necessitate a robust privacy measure? Now, luckily, there's been enhances in privacy enhancing techniques or secured sharing, such as cryptographic methods and permission blockchain networks that can ensure that data confidentiality is maintained whilst being transparent. And I'm quite surprised we are seeing the rise of appetite and even the mandated positioning around regulatory compliance. As we start to adhere to this, blockchain solutions must be designed with compliance in, in mind, allowing for proper record keeping, data protection and auditing capabilities. There's so many real world use cases of successful blockchain implementations across various industries now. 
And those supply chain traceability examples starts with diamonds um, that goes as far, field, as far afield as textiles and food traceability with large providers such as IBM and SAP all have maturity in the space now. Let's just go to the next point. So I guess the most important role is blockchain is a network technology. So therefore, collaborative networks play a pivotal role in ensuring and driving the adoption and the success um, within industry, whether it be the battery industry, PGMs or critical minerals. And the importance of industry collaboration and ecosystem partnerships can't be overstated. We've seen so many attempts by technology companies where really there's only one or two participants on chain or it's a complete closed loop environment. Now, by coming together, stakeholders can leverage that collective expertise, the resources and influence and overcome challenges. And a consortia approach has typically worked well, where we can dedicate advancing blockchain adoption and standardization as they are key drivers of progress. Now, these collaborative efforts bring industry players, government bodies, research institutions, technology providers to the, to the table. And as I said before, it's really policy that becomes the large driver that enables that consortium to be coordinated. And within those consortiums, we start to see the setting of industry standards, the fostering of interoperability, and creating this environment that's conducive to a wider spread blockchain implementation. No longer is it a technology challenge with blockchain. It is certainly a challenge as we begin to understand the physical to digital connection, that secured chain of custody event handling where arguably in a refinery process, there is no one solution, technology solution that can provide for a material unbroken chain of custody. So there has to be both the marriage of the technology in a physical world with the digital science, as well as material science to help us enable that traceability effort. By sharing all of these experiences and lessons, I hope that everyone on the call today has been able to gain um, a larger adoption and understanding of the evolution of the technology and where it's sitting. And ultimately, the collaborative networks um, that are established across industries and cross industries are helping to build a sustainable and transparent ecosystem. So in conclusion, I'm looking forward to continuously work across industry and helping the adoption of technologies Certainly blockchain for me is a favoured technology, but it's not the only technology stack that we use. As I say, it's a symphony of technologies that enables us. But at the very core of it, it's a human system that we need to conquer around change by promoting that collaboration, facilitating partnerships, establishing a consortium and or building a consortium to answer policy. It's these collective efforts that are going to enable us to create a more efficient, responsible and resilient supply chain. Thank you. So, uh, so with that, I'd like to just invite everybody to please put your hands together for the fabulous Leanne Kemp. Brilliant.